Tennis, anyone? <laughs> I just saw the new film Challengers with Zendaya and two guys, and I'm going to talk to you about it right now. When I first saw the trailer for Challengers, I thought Zendaya, two other people, a threesome. Make that a foursome, because I'm in. No, seriously, it didn't look very good to me. Zendaya, beautiful young actress, not really my cup of tea as far as the sexuality goes. She's just so thin. I'm concerned she's going to break like Mr. Glass from the Unbreakable films. But regardless, absolutely a treasure to behold. And she won me the hell over in this film. Let's cut the fluff in the preamble. I thought Challengers was really good. You know what else is really good? This channel. So do me a favor and subscribe to it. You're actually doing yourself a favor because I post movie reviews, commentary, live streams every single week. The more the merrier here, kind of like challengers. We'd love to have you around. So if you please do that now, I'll wait. I'll be right here. Just go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't and like the video. Maybe leave a comment saying, hey, Adam, I subscribed. I'll, I have nothing better going on, believe me. All right. Okay, that's enough time for the joke. Challengers is a fantastic film. Love the way it's shot. It oozes style. Helping it is the soundtrack by Trent Reznor. Dude is on all cylinders in this one. He took what he did with David Fincher in the 35 movies they did together and he just pumped it up to a thousand. There's a point in the film where the music gets so loud they have to artificially bump up the dialogue to match it to try to like compensate for the aggressive music hitting. But why does it work so well? A lot of background noise doesn't necessarily make the story any better. Well, the story's very rich. There's a lot of layer to this story. It's a lot more than just two guys fall in love with a woman and they're going to fight for her attention. While that is there, that's barely the surface. And all of this comes out in the form of tennis. Because these people eat, sleep, breathe, fuck tennis. And as much as they love and respect the sport, for the most part, they also kind of disrespect themselves by throwing fits. They break so many tennis rackets in this movie. Thousands of dollars destroyed. To see them shatter what has to be hundreds of dollars every single time is just, that's disappointing. That's just, what a privileged life they live. I brought up Zendaya. I feel like she, more than any other actor or actress on the planet right now, is propped up to such a ridiculous position. She's put on such a pedestal in Hollywood. Every time I see a post about her on Instagram or, or TikTok or Twitter or, form, or the artist formerly known as Twitter X, I just, I scratch my head. Like, is she really that great? Is she just so perfect at everything according to the internet? That's kind of a bad standard to put on this poor woman. But in this movie, she kind of won me over. I've always thought she was fine in other stuff I've seen, certainly not to the level that they always you know, praise her at. But here, I was like, damn, yeah, okay, I get it. I get what she's putting in. I appreciate the work she's putting out here. Mike Faced and Josh O'Connor are the other two leads, and they're equally putting in the work. I really believe this friendship they have, this, this rivalry of sorts, this sick, twisted game they play with each other. Their characters are Art and Patrick, and they're going to be Chris pining over Zendaya's character, Tashi. The entire premise basically boils down to Tashi makes these two compete for her through the form of a tennis match. And as they say, to the victor goes the spoils. But the real match isn't necessarily happening on the court. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's some stuff happening up here. There's some stuff going on. And if you're hoping for a quick resolution, you're going to be waiting over two hours because this match starts at the beginning but will not finish until the final minutes of the film. We're going to be jumping all over through time in this thing, ranging from the day before to a few months to 13 years. And this is going to quickly fly around every five to ten minutes. You're going to constantly be on your toes wondering, wait, where are they now? How old are they? Obviously, there's going to be text on screen. It's going to let you know the day before, four weeks before, two minutes earlier. It's like that Seinfeld episode where they played in reverse. That's kind of how it felt watching this movie. Typically, that kind of thing drives me up a wall and I don't like it. But it has more of a Christopher Nolan-esque play with time than it does some of the other sloppily handled ones. Challengers gets it right. And again, the style, the, the way it presents itself is so slick, so cool, so unapologetically homoerotic. If you clutch your pearls over that or get offended, this is definitely not the movie for you. 
I really enjoyed this though. Challengers has enough interesting ideas brought to the table along with some cool camera effects. Sometimes they don't always work. The tennis stuff, for instance, is fantastic. I love the, the energy behind it. The sound is so good. The design of those rackets smack in the ball. It's just hard it's intense when it doesn't work for me is when it goes a little too looney tunes and that camera goes pov shot and it's trying to be the tennis ball and, and fly around the court it gives it a unique personality but it also kind of took me out of those moments from time to time zendaya is effortlessly a boss bitch in this movie though and i thought she was really great the guys have a yin yang thing going on one's a major alpha the other's a major beta and how that's going to play into the relationship is quite interesting the movie presents this film as a sexy romp in the sack it's really not that so much there's not a lot of those kind of sequences this isn't an episode of euphoria for instance it's a lot more pared back there are moments of course but for the most part this is a focus on the rivalry about the inner demons fighting the struggle the power dynamics between these two and what they're going to do next and it keeps you it keeps you guessing it keeps you rooting for different characters at different points I found it really good. Uh, Challengers was a sleeper win for me. I went into this thinking, okay, this is going to be some lame teenage love story. It's going to try to be a little sexualized here and there. But for the most part, it's going to be shock and awe without the value. I was wrong. This one provides a lot of value, at least for me. I thought the storytelling was really good. Again, the film, the way that it's shot, the way that it looks, the way that it feels, it hits right. It hit right for me. Let me know if you saw Challengers or if you're interested in seeing it now based on this glowing recommendation. This is easily a top five for me of the year. Not that that's saying a whole lot, but I've had some good movies already come out. So I'm, I'm really happy about this one. Hopefully you see it and you like it as well. Let me know. Please like the video. Subscribe if you have. And I post, again, movie comments, movie reviews every single week on the channel. Would love to have you stick around. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. And there's a second brand new channel, Adam Does Rants, where I bitch up a storm about the silliest first world problems you could possibly imagine. Would love to have you all of those places. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.